Okay, then. Let's do this thing. It's about 11.50. I just got home. I just left the United Center, uh, the Forbidden Door, AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling. I did go to the show tonight. I will try to deliver, you know, try to put some footage out on YouTube if I can tonight. If not, I will do it tomorrow. Uh, this was a very long show. Uh, me and my brother went. I actually got him tickets because um, it was a birthday gift. I bought the tickets about at least a couple months ago. Pretty um, <clears throat> pretty pretty good prices, I, I would say. Not not as high as I thought. I'm sure people know about the five dollars being um, or like five dollar <laughs> tickets on sale right now. It was mostly a pack house to where I was. I had floor seats, so uh, we were on the floor. I was surprised the floor seats were cheaper. Shit, the lower level seats were more higher than um, you know, the floor seats. Uh, but the floor seats were pretty cheap though. Uh, I was looking forward to going to the show anyways, given there was a lot of New Japan talent on that I did want to see. I know it was kind of crazy with the booking going into this show. Honestly, I don't think the booking going into the, this whole joint show has not been very good. Um, I've spoken on this before. I spoke on this last Wednesday. Um, <laughs> I feel like with AEW, they've been trying to book too many big shows in the past month. When you go from Double or Nothing to The Forbidden Door and you're trying to book Blood and Guts the following week and push that too, there's a lot going on at the same time. Also, I know there's been a lot of injuries in wrestling um, that have really, you know, kind of some, I wouldn't say put a black, on the show, a black eye on the show on the way, but it has kind of damaged it in a way. You know, there was still a lot of names that were being off the show even tonight. Dude, either they could not travel or they were just hurt and they could not make the show. Or I've talked about before some other bigger New Japan names not even being be, even being able to make the show or just booking big matches at the last second just because okay and I kind of found out on Friday on Rampage um I did get there about um <coughs> listen I've been sick for the past few days too so I've been pretty fucked up this is probably the best <laughs> probably the best I feel like right now so I'm trying to take control of the coughs and whatnot. And and what and stuff, so I, I I'm okay, but um I probably will cough a little bit here during this review and stuff. But like I said, it was a very packed house. Crowd was loud. It's Chicago. You already know I was gonna go. I may go back to watch some of the show just for commentary because I know they did have um Kevin Kelly. I'm glad he was on commentary. I know they had Excalibur there. Taz was there. I think Shivani joined the table at one point. I think he was. Um, was he on the table? I'm not really sure. I know Jr. was there because he had his own entrance. Um. Going to the announce table also. So we did have a lot of people on commentary um throughout the night, but I was glad to hear that Kevin Kelly was on there. I will go back and watch. I like Kevin Kelly. I think he's a great commentator, and I'm glad they were able to get them for this show. But um, yes, we did arrive there at least about six something. I think about six ten, six twenty. Cause I know the pre show <coughs> shit. I know the pre show was going on at that time. Um by the time I walked in there. Um, it was Keith Lee and Swerve versus um, Yoshinobu Kanamaru and El Desperado, Suzuki Goon. Keith Lee was super over. I will say that when I stepped into the building. By the time I came, when they match came on, that's when their entrances was going on at the same time. Uh, Keith Lee and then went over. Keith Lee did the spirit bomb for the win. Um, I didn't see Lance Archer and Nick Camarato. I know that passed, but I think Lance Archer is representing New Japan right here, by the way. Suzuki Goon. Um... Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi beat QT Marshall and Aaron Solo. I missed that match also, so I know it was on the pre-show. Also, it was the Acclaim. Well, Max Caster and the Gun Club and um, Billy Gunn, uh, badass Billy Gunn, versus the DKC, uh, Kevin Knight, Alex Koloff, and U Uramura. Basically, the LA Dojo guys. I know the Gun Club was gone throughout most of this match. It ended up with Max Caster and them winning. I missed the finish because I think I ended up going to the bathroom before the actual main show started, so I know the acclaim of them did win, and I did catch... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I was there in time for the, for you know, Max Caster's rap, which is pretty good this time, so um, I did enjoy that. Uh, also, we did have English and Japanese announcers, uh, Justin Roberts and um, Takaro Shibata. Um, they were the announcers for both American, like I said, both American and Japanese, as we did kick off the first official match of the night, which I guess now this had to do to see who will get the advantage in the Blood and Guts match coming this week, was Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara and Minoru Suzuki 
versus Willa Yuta, Shota Umino, uh, Moxley's young boy, I, I may should say Shooter himself, and Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston was super over as, you know, people singing Judas and singing to, um, you know, Minoru Suzuki's theme song. Also, um, this match was pretty long. I was surprised, especially for the opener, but this did, like I said, it had some good time. It was a very good match that, um, <clears throat> that basically ate, you know, especially drug the crowd into. I enjoyed it, okay? This is a very great match. I heard on commentary, I had to talk about Umino trying to get payback on Jericho, uh, especially from the Tokyo Dome a few years ago when uh, Jericho was beating him up and his dad up red shoes um, and stuff, so he was trying to get payback on them. But, man, this this was crazy, okay? I I enjoyed this match a lot. Um, <clears throat> I know they started trying to get Umino because Umino had his um, finisher into, um, I think it was on Jericho, put him into like, the Boston Crab and stuff. Um, Guevara and Suzuki got in, started beating up Umino, um, Suzuki ended up hitting, um, you know, Kingston with a sleeper, and then a God style power drive it in, they started beating up Umino, Umino came back and, um, fought back until Jericho with the Judas effect, like, shit, I thought, um, Jericho was about to lose, you know, well, Jericho was gonna win after they hit him with the baseball back, but that didn't work either, but, man, it was a lot of crazy stuff in this match, but Jericho hit the Judas effect for the win, so now they get the advantage, um, at the Blood and Gut show, uh, coming up this Wednesday, but I did like this match a lot, um, and stuff, and they tried to, like, you know, incorporate some New Japan storyline at the same time, too, while they're trying to get their own storyline over with AEW, um, stories also, but, um, very good six-man tag, fun to see Suzuki and whatnot once again, so, um, especially in the United Center, it was pretty cool, so I did enjoy that, um, next, the ROH and IWGP tag team titles on the line, Bobby Cruz was out there to be the announcer for it, which was FTR, uh, the United Empire of Jeff Cobb and the Great O'Karn, and um, Rapongi Vice of Rocky Romero and Trent Beretta. <clears throat> but <coughs> FTR was definitely over. Definitely over. Um, I know at one point that um, I didn't even see Dax Hart would even leave. I guess he had like an injury spot going on, which he did come back in the crowd. They had popped for it because I, I didn't even know he was gone at one point. Shit. Uh, Rapongi Vice was out of the ring for a long time, too. I didn't even see them. But, you know, Hardwood came back. You know, fans are chanting, this is awesome then. Um, <clears throat> Beretta and um, Romero end up uh, taking out Cobb with, like, a dead eye after that. Um, right, at, right after that, uh, Wheeler and um, Dax kind of cleared the ring. FTR end up hitting the Shatter Machine onto um, Rocky Romero. So now they are the IWGP. Heavyweight, <laughs> man, I'm not going good with this coffin tonight, but um, they are the new IWGP Tag Team Champions, so now they both have the IWGP, the Ring of Honor, and the AAA Tag Titles. Like, shit, I'm sure we'll see these guys in New Japan at some point, and they will show up, so i um, kind of looking forward to that. Um, Yeah, sorry I'm talking to say a lot, but yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to that, so I'm sure they're going to be in New Japan at some point. I gotta say, the IWGP Tag Titles have been changing hands a lot lately, and I mean a lot, I feel like this is like the third or fourth title change I've seen in the past uh, month, because it's like, United Empire, they just won the tag belts like a Dominion like a couple weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, so now FTR has those tag by titles now, but yeah, FTR was super over right here, um, <coughs> FTR was super over right here, and the fans uh, definitely were happy with the finish and whatnot, so, um, you know, Good stuff right there. Very good tag match. Um, FTR got the win, so they're holding a lot of gold right now. Next, a fatal four-way for the um, All-Atlantic Championship, which was Pac, Miro, Malachi Black, and Clark Connors. Tomohiro Ishii was supposed to be in this match, but Tomohiro Ishii ended up getting injured, unfortunately. So that's another injury, and now Clark Connors was going to be his um, replacement, which I'm going to be honest, a lot of these people in the crowd... Did not know who the fuck Clark Connors was. Some people actually thought he was Cameron Grimes or they thought he was Matt Riddle. But Clark Connors is good, though. I've watched a guy in the best of Super Juniors. I know he's on New Japan Strong. He came from the LA Dojo. He's not bad. But I, I knew he was going to take the pinfall one way or another in this match. But, you know, <clears throat> once again, big fatal four-way match. You knew a lot of crazy stuff was going to be on going on in this. I kind of thought, um, you know... I actually thought Miro was going to win this match, to be honest. I kind of almost kind of had him winning this whole thing. 
but it ended up with Pac winning the match after, you know, Connors, um, you know, Black. Because <clears throat> um, Miro had the game over on um, Connors and everything, but Black came in, sprayed missing to him after that, hit the Black Mass on him. Uh, Connors had, you know, tried to roll into, like, you know, to submission and everything. But <clears throat> and then what that, but um, Black got the submission on him. Pac got on the top rope, hit a 450, and then put um Connors in the brutalizer for the win, which the fans did chanting, you deserve it. So Pac is new to the new All Atlantic Championship. Personally, I think it's too many title belts on this show. And now you got more IWGP tag titles now and this All Atlantic belt. It's like it's way too many belts right now. I'm telling you, way too many belts um <clears throat> um on this show. All right, way it's just it was too many belts. Uh, okay, I think it's too many titles right now in AEW that they're trying to juggle because you're trying to juggle your AEW ones, you're trying to double, you know, juggle them the Ring of Honor ones, you're trying to juggle the um <clears throat> now the IWGP tag titles, so like New Japan belt. So I think it's too many belts, and now you got this new belt too. I just think this belt was just made just to get you know somebody um on the show, just get some people on the show. That's what I felt what was gonna happen. Okay. Um, and I, you know, I wonder if Tommy or Ishii was in this match. Who do I think would have taken the pinfall in a way? Also, I think, man, who would have taken the pinfall in this? Probably Black or um Pac. They probably would have taken the pinfall if Ishii was, you know, Ishii was it still was it was it was able to still make this match. Uh, but with Connors out there, I I knew Connors was taking that pinfall a mile away. Like no matter who wins, Connors was gonna take the fall. Like I knew that was coming. Okay. Um, but right after that, we had a six-man tag, another tag team match. Um, now, this was originally supposed to be an eight-man tag team match. But uh, once again, uh, Hiromu Takahashi could not make the show. Um, he has a fever, so he was not able to travel to America. Uh, I was kind of happy to see some of LIJ on this show because there really was no LIJ on the show except for um, Shingo Takagi. Um, I really wish Naito would have been on his show. I think it's his birthday this weekend, so um, happy birthday to him. But, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> Naito being one of the bigger names and shit, LIJ being a very big group, I wish they would have all been here. But yeah, Hiromu was not able to make the show, so this was now a six-man between um, Shingo, Sting, and Darby Allin, or Dudes with Attitudes versus Bullet Club, I guess from one night only the Young Bucks and um, El Fantasmo, um, Hikaleo was out there. Now Sting didn't come out at first. I was wondering where was Sting at, and then they show everything went black. Um, I think that's when Tony Schiavone came in um, and, and whatnot. And this, you know, on commentary, um, Sting was like on the top, or somebody dressed as Sting was, you know, stand at the top of United Center, and then you know when um, lights came back on. Sting was on the ramp, entrance way on top, did a big ass, you know, jump and everything off the stage and jumped onto everybody. <coughs> <coughs> Shit, man, I'm not good tonight. I'm gonna finish this review though. I know that. But um, yeah, Sting, everybody's brawling out there. Um, it was a lot going on in this match. You, you know, when I kind of think about it, looking at both El Fantasmo and the Young Bucks. They have to be like the goofballs of the Bullet Club now that I think about it. And by God, let me say this one tight hit thing too. Man, where was the rest of the Bullet Club tonight? It would have been good to see the bigger Bullet Club stars on this show. Um, no Bad Luck Fale, no Chase Owens. I know he's been a lower guy for years, but he's finally got his name up there. No Taji Ishimori. Um, I know he just competed like last week, but you know, nothing. He's now on the show or um who else um, that's in the Bullet Club? That's somewhat of a name. I know Ace Austin ain't about to be at S Impact. I know Chris Bay is not about to be here. Juice is hurt, but he actually was here tonight. Just, you know, looking from the crowd. Um, shit, I feel like we're letting anybody in the Bullet Club. Evil in that House of Torture thing. That's a whole different thing, but they're still Bullet Club. Um, <clears throat> Shit, like yeah, it's a, it's a lot of guys um from Bullet Club that weren't really here tonight. I would have expected to see more of them on this show. Um, but one thing I can say about this match, this six man tag, is Sting. 
Sting still has it. Sting can still fucking go. Don't ever doubt Sting, whoever tries to doubt him, okay? Sting did a damn senton, okay? And and that looked pretty damn cool. Um, Because <clears throat> even when Sting got in the ring, Sting was having that no-selling stuff. Um, hitting the corner, you know, the snare splash, doing the woo thing and all that. Um, and, you know, taking everybody out, trying to go for the Scorpion death drop, but it did not work. Referee comes in the ring, distracts, you know, um, distracted by Hikaleo. Phantasma with a nut shot into Sting and whatnot. Um, Darby ended up coming in with a cutter in, taking him out. Uh, Buck's trying to go for a super kick uh, on the Sting, which, by the way, he no sold a super kick after this every day, super kick everybody. And um, took out the Bucks then after that. And then Sting sold after taking the super kicks, I guess, then. And stuff. And, you know, everybody's just hitting moves and, and everything. Um, <clears throat> and stuff. Um, Bucks in, like, dives on the Takagi and um, Darby on the outside. Uh, Phantasmo doing his little, you know, walk on the rope. Sting and doing it on the moon. So on the outside, Sting, like, he's about to hit a dive. But, um, come on, Sting was about to hit no dive. And um, next thing you know, they end up super kicking Sting in the ring. They were all about to hit the BT tree trigger on them, but Sting ended up, you know, falling to the ground, which, you know, um, you know, the Bucks end up hitting each other. Sting hit, like, a double um, Scorpion death drop onto the Bucks after that. Um, Darby hit a coffin drop on the Hikaleo down on the outside. Takagi ended up, you know, punching off against uh, Shingo and everything. He hit the pumping bomber then. And then he hit the, uh, hit the last of the dragon onto El Phantasmo to get the win. Okay, so I think this match was crazy. Sting was like the MVP out there. And I did kind of like that. They all did the fist bump. Almost like kind of be like a different version of LIJ out there for the time being between Shingo, Sting, and um and Darby. So it, it was it was cool to see um <coughs> it was cool to see um like I said, it was cool to see Shingo live though, especially just one LIJ member, but seeing Sting wrestle, um, this is the first time I've ever seen, I think I've seen Sting wrestle before in the past, but the fact that I even got to see Sting wrestle, it's just pretty damn cool, and, and that's from a personal standpoint, okay, so I'm glad I got to see Sting out there, and, um, I can still fucking go, even at this age, don't fucking doubt Sting, okay, just don't, just don't doubt him, um, <clears throat> also, um, I guess they, one thing I know they had backstage segments and they didn't really show anything on the big screen. I wish they would have showed some on the big screen. God, I guess Jericho and them, like a, they hit like a fireball onto Shota in the back, taking him out. I know that happened. Um, and that's what I, from what I read and even saw on Twitter because um, they didn't show that in the arena. So I wish they would have showed some of the backstage segments. Uh, next, next, now this match was in a tough spot. Thunder Rosa, Tony Storm, AEW Women's Championship. I don't think this match needed to be on the show. There was no build going into this match, especially for an AEW New Japan show. I think this was kind of last minute. I think they should have waited on a different date to, um, you know, do this whole match. Because honestly, before this match even began, I saw people going to the bathroom or going to get something to eat. So you know the crowd reaction actually changed because the crowd was mostly basically hot throughout the entire night. By the time they got to this match, this was the cool down match. And <clears throat> I, you know, the match wasn't bad. Okay. I don't, I don't think the match was bad or anything. Um, but nobody really cared. And I knew Tony storm wasn't going to win this damn title. Okay. Donna Rosa won. <clears throat> Thunder Rose hit the Thunder Driver. She won the match. So, I don't, I don't really got much to say about this. So, yeah, she she just hit the, um, whatever, the Thunder Driver, the final reckoning, like, you know, Goldust's move out there, Dustin Rhodes and all that. So, it, it was just kind of flat. All right? It was, it was basically a flat finish out there. I don't think a lot of people cared. I think the crowd was up and down on it th throughout this whole match. There were times they looked like they were getting excited for it, but then there were times where it was like, who gives a shit at the same time? So I think the women were basically in a very tough spot. I think they just put them on the show just to say we had women on the show, but I think they should have just kept this strictly AEW and New Japan, and they should have saved them for a better date because you basically kind of set the women out there to almost try to hope they can get the crowd over, and I don't think it really worked 
Trust me, I saw people leaving during this match, okay? That was a time to go to the bathroom and get something to eat. So they was kind of out throughout this thing. So wasn't a bad match, but I would have saved this for a bigger show or save it for the next pay-per-view or just save it for something special. This was not a good time to do this match, and it showed right here. So this probably had to be the week, one of the weakest matches of the night. And it's not even on, on their fault, but I don't think this should have been booked at the same time. Next, Jim Ross came out uh, for the next match, which was Will Ospreay with Aussie Open uh, versus Orange Cassidy for the IWGP US title. Uh, Juice Robinson, who was in the crowd with Hikaleo and, Fa and Fantasmo, watching on as Juice still has the title and has not given up that title belt yet. Honestly, I did not really care for this match. I think this is a joke. I'm surprised they even had... The, the time they bring Jim Ross out here is for this match. This had to be a rib. And for him, that, and a lot of people, my friend was telling me that he was putting Orange Cassidy over like crazy. I'm like, man, they must have been paying him a lot that night to put Orange Cassidy over. Like, they had to be paying him a big amount of money to do that. Because I even I know JR, like, <clears throat> no, some of this stuff is not over, but he's doing his best. So, JR's trying, but you can't blame him for not giving a shit sometimes every week when you know something is not over. I'm going to be honest. Like, you know, <clears throat> I'm going to give Will Ospreay one thing. Will Ospreay did his best to make this match look good as possible. Okay? I didn't really care about this match. I think this was a joke. I think they wasted Will Ospreay right here. I think Will Ospreay should have deserved a bigger opponent. But once again, with a lot of injuries and controversies and, you know, especially the whole AAA and, you know, CMLL little battle that they couldn't even have Andrade, which was supposed to be his opponent, which that would have been a better match to watch. And I would have loved to see that match out there. But due to their, the AAA CMLL beef, he could not appear on this show. Hell, you couldn't even get Pentagon and Phoenix on this show, too. So, no L.I.J. for this show um, and whatnot. But it, it would have been cool if we saw L.I.J. out there. All of L.I.J., though. Rush, Andrade, Naito. That would have been fucking cool to see. Listen, but it was a good match, though. And I'm going to say that. <coughs> Despite what I think about the whole Orange Cassidy gimmick, I never said he couldn't go in the ring. It's just the damn gimmick that you can't take this thing seriously. There's a reason why a lot of people call this guy Pockets, okay? Or he's going against the Pocket Man out there. So you knew where Lost Spray was going to win this match either way, all right? And and I'm not surprised. I never believed Orange Cassidy was ever going to win this, but I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to try to take this match seriously, but I know Will was going to win and whatnot. So Will did what he did. He won with the Stormbreaker. He got the win out there. Um... They ain't, even, they ain't even giving, you know, him a title belt yet, um, Will Ospreay. He just coming out with the Red Pro belt right now. But <laughs> right after that, um, Ospreay and Aussie Open start beating up Orange Cassidy. Rapongi, Rapongi Vice tried to come out for the save. Next thing you know, uh, Katsuri, Katsuri Shibata came out. And I'm like, oh, shit, Shibata? <clears throat> Shibata came out because um, I was happy to see Shibata, okay? And it looked like a lot of people in the crowd didn't know who Shibata was. and whatever. Because I, I didn't know how I many people were really going to know who Shibata was, if they knew him or not. Because Shibata, a lot of people know Shibata has been injured for the past few years now since a match with Okada that basically put him on a shelf and really could never wrestle again. And most of the time he's been, you know, training in the LA Dojo, you know, training a lot of young lions. But Shibata has slowly and surely tried to get his way back into professional wrestling now. Um, I could say he did wrestle the G1 and like, um, you know, what was it, UWF rules against Zack Sabre Jr. And he did wrestle at Wrestle Kingdom earlier this year in a match, in a full-fledged match. And uh, Shibata got a big reaction coming out there. And he started taking out Aussie Open. He started hitting, taking out, um, well, Ospreay, hitting him with the um, hesitation drop kick. <clears throat> you know, hitting... And the PKs out there too, and um, and whatnot, and um, basically he's gonna hit his finish on, finish on, putting the sleeper in. But Aussie Open got Osprey out of there. Cassie, you know, going to Shibata. They had a stare down there. Cassie put the sunglasses on them, and they all stuck their thumbs up as them and Rapongi Vice celebrated. So I'm glad to see that people knew who Shibata was. 
And I'm sure Shibata may be back in the ring very soon. And Osprey could be his next opponent. Because Shibata, you know, like I said, the guy got hit in the head so hard. If I remember a few years ago doing a headbutt that he collapsed. And they said he couldn't ever wrestle again. But, like I said before, Shibata has slowly but surely, you know, sl like I said, slowly but surely gotten his way back into um wrestling again. So I think we will be seeing Shibata pretty soon again in a match at some point. But I was glad they did bring him out here for um bring him out here uh for the Chicago crowd and uh people knew who he was and stuff. So um I'm glad they gave him a very good reaction when he came out there. So it was great to see Shibata. Um next. Zack Saber Jr., uh, who was supposed to face Brian Danielson, but unfortunately that did not happen. And Danielson said he had a replacement. And I kind of figured who this replacement was gonna be. And it ended up being Claudio Castanoli, formerly known as Cesaro. He ended up going against Zack Saber Jr. I think this was probably one of the best matches out of the entire night. It was a very technical match, more methodical, slow paced. Because <clears throat> everything throughout the night has been either rapid fire matches or damn near spot fest out there, okay? And this was a different type of match. This was very technical, very um, very technical and very methodical out there. And I enjoyed this match a lot, okay? I really enjoyed this match. Zack Sabre Jr., just, just fantastic technical wrestler in general. Same with Claudio Castanoli. The strength of Claudio sometimes is insane. Because, like, goddamn, the minute the match even started... He had Zach with the um, European uppercut and then the um, neutralizer for the win. Uh, well, almost for the win, but then being a two count. These two put on a hell of a match. And, and, and you know, one thing you got to put up in this match is the selling of this match too, okay? Especially how Zach just, you know, you know, slowly just takes out your limbs as he was trying to focus on Cesaro's arm so he can not... So he can not do the damn swing out there and stuff. Especially just, you know, just dodge him as much as he could to put him in some type of submission hold. Um, I know people wanted to see the swing out there. I liked it when um, Cesaro lifted um, Zack Sabre Jr. back into the ring just to slam him in, just, you know, picking him up from the ground, climbing up the steps, and just getting him back in there. It, it's, it's insane, okay? Um, but, <clears throat> you know, it, it was... um, <clears throat> It was a lot of crazy things in this match from, you know, Zack going for the... um. The O'Connor roll and whatnot, or that, um, what's like that European roll? I forget what that roll up is called and whatnot, but you, you know how Zach does that special roll up on people to usually get the win. I, I always forget the name, I hear it all the time, but I, I forget the name of it and stuff. But, um, I almost thought he was gonna have it there. There was like several times I thought Zach Sabre Jr. was gonna win, but I figured he wasn't gonna win given this is Claudio's, um, debut match out here. Um, Claudio ended up getting the win though with the, um, like a big clothesline and a power bomb. You know, for the win, almost like a double underhook power bomb. Well, double underhook then released into a power bomb and beat Zack Saber Jr. That was like damn near twenty minutes they had out there too. So um, I enjoyed this match. I, like I said, I enjoyed this match a lot. I thought this was the best match out of the entire night. This delivered big time. I still want to see Daniels and Zack Saber Jr. at some point in the future, and I think that will happen one day. But um, this was a very great replacement for. A, gr a very great replacement for um, Danielson until Danielson comes back. So um, with Claudio being out here, um, I enjoyed it. Okay, I really, I really, really did enjoy it. So definitely one of the best matches out of the entire night. And um, you know, Claudio joining the um, Blackpool Combat Club and being part of AEW now is a big get. So um, that that's great to see. Um, next, a fatal four away for the IWGP Heavyweight Title. Which, honestly, I would have put this in the main event. But given, you know, who's in the main event, I can understand why. Personally, I think this is the only real-world title match on here tonight. Because the other belt is an interim belt. So, this is the only world title match, if you ask me. Real-world title match for tonight. Fatal 4-Away, though. Jay White. <clears throat> Kazuchika Okada. Hangman Page. And Adam Cole. And let me tell you something right here, man. When Okada came out... Okada had damn near one of the biggest pops out of the entire night. Like, me and my friend Steven said this. Like, he is a, just, he just is leagues ahead of both Hangman and Cole in this match. They were like the weak links out of this match, if you ask me. Like, between Okada and Jay White, they came off as bigger stars than um, both Hangman and Cole. But 
when Okada came out there, and I wish we could get the Okada Bucks, but when Okada came out there, God, God damn, that was one of the biggest pops of the night. Between him and Claudio, Okada had a, a mega pop out there, okay? A mega pop. Um, Jay White, you know, yeah, Ghetto out there too. And it was a very, very great Fatal 4-Way, I thought. This is the second Fatal 4-Way we saw tonight, but <coughs> I enjoyed this match. Very fun Fatal 4-Way match until the finish, in a way. Um, basically, you know, of course you're going to get a lot of crazy stuff going on in here. People trying to side with each other or turn against each other at one point. Uh, Okada such you trying to go for the Rainmaker. You know, get the camera shot going on. Um, Cole had stopped it. You know, ended up super kicking Okada. Damn it, trying to super kick everybody out there at the end. Okada, um, <clears throat> ended up drop kicking Cole. Trying to go for the Rainmaker again. Cole, um, ended up ducking. Got an Guri. Um, Hangman hey Page. <clears throat> tried to come back in, but um was taken off. Okada drop kicked um Cole again, hit the um landslide on him. Um Cole ended up dodging the Rainmaker. Once again, Jay White came back to the ring, um, hit Okada with a blade runner, and then he ended up covering Adam Cole, um, which a lot of people say like he was kind of fixing his hair while laying down. And I thought Cole was hurt and stuff. I think they said he collapsed or something going on in this match, but um you know, it's like Cole just kind of dropped and ended up... I thought the finish was kind of flat in a way that people didn't really know what was going on. They thought he was hurt. I know the Bucks and Kyle O'Reilly came to check on Cole then after that as Jay White and Ghetto headed to the back then. Um, I enjoyed this Fatal 4-Way, though, for real. I liked it a lot. <clears throat> and whatnot. Um, <coughs> and stuff. Um, Honestly, I thought Hangman hey Page was going to take the win. I thought Page was then the weakest link out of this entire match. Um... He was still good out there, but I just felt like he was going to take the pinfall. I really thought he was. Now, apparently Cole's been hurt throughout most of the time. That's why we, why we haven't really seen him wrestle this much until tonight. But um, I was kind of surprised. I didn't even know that was Cole that even took the pinfall at first. I thought it was Hangman that took the pin. But I found out it was Cole then because I guess I didn't see it. I mean, I must have turned my head or something. And that's when um, you know, I found out he was actually pinned once they showed the replay of the match. But this was a very... um. <clears throat> Very fun Fatal 4-Way. I just thought the finish felt kind of kind of flat then. I think people were confused what was going on after that. And Jay White still ended up retaining the IWGP heavyweight title. So, um, not surprised. You know, Jay White still retained. He was not going to lose his IWGP heavyweight title after he just won it back in Dominion a few weeks ago. And he needs to be champion. <laughs> you know. <coughs> <coughs> Damn, I'm not doing good tonight. He needs to be champion going into the G1. Okay? So, um, you know, that was going to happen. But in the main event <clears throat> was Hiroshi Tanahashi, John Moxley, interim AEW world title. Um, Mox and Rigo, I know they came from them. Well, they came through my entrance way in a way, so they were pretty close to where I was at. Kind of went from the Death Rider theme song to the Wild Thing theme song. Um, Tanahashi got a big pop. First time I've ever seen Tanahashi wrestle live, so this is very fun to see. Um, <clears throat> one thing I will say about throughout this match in the beginning. Apparently, and I saw this myself, because everybody was looking a different direction at first throughout the whole match. It was two dudes trying to fight each other. Well, they did end up fighting each other, and security ended up throwing them out of the building. I swear at the last second... Well, so security got them out the door. This one dude tried to swing up on security, and they, they got his ass then for real because he thought he was about to fight security, but he broke out and he was going to swing on them folks. So that wasn't about to happen. So I heard these guys pay like three dollars $400 for their tickets, and they're probably some drunk fans. I know that. And um, they got their ass thrown out. <clears throat> so that's on them, okay? That, that That's on them. Um, getting thrown out the, um, getting thrown out the building and whatnot. Waste the money, though. Y'all paid all that money and y'all got to the main event because y'all probably drunk as hell want to fight. And then y'all niggas get, th get thrown out the building and stuff. That's on y'all folks for that. Y'all stupid. But this match, though, itself, <coughs> I enjoyed this match. Um, 
<clears throat> I liked it a lot. Man, my voice is going out tonight. Um, I gotta get some tea. But um, I did enjoy this match. Moxley, who tends to bleed in every match he's in, I thought it was kind of unnecessary. I know he bladed, and I think he bladed very deep in this match that he just had the crimson mask and stuff. You know, Tanahashi and the uh, half flat flow. Um, it wasn't that for a two count. Mox trying to go for the bulldog choke. It did not work. Um, <clears throat> they both start going back, back and forth. You know, um, punching each other. Uh, Moxley start putting like the real naked choke. Fans trying to ch start chanting "Go Ace." They started to boo at Moxley a lot throughout this match. Um, I know. Um. Tanahashi got two um high fly flows on him, but it did not work. Um, Tana was you know Moxley trying to hit multiple um roll ups on Tanahashi. It did not work and whatnot. And um, you know Tanahashi trying to get back up um because he did have like in a submission hold, uh, choking him out. Um, fans were rooting for Tanahashi. Um, and you know he finally got back up, but. Mox at the Death Rider, pinned him clean. Mox won. The fans, um, <clears throat> I'll tell you right here, they were on both these guys' sides, but I feel like a lot of people wanted Tanahashi to win this match more. I was chanting for Tanahashi out there. I wanted Tanahashi to win, to be honest. I knew Mox was going to win anyways, given, come on, it's the interim title. Tanahashi's not going to be around. Tanahashi ain't about to be here every week. Tanahashi is in the G1. So he's got to head back to Japan anyways. Because the Tanahashi... Because the G1 is in like a week or two. So he has to be back in Japan. <coughs> they, now, I'll say this. If Tanahashi won, you still could have got that match with CM Punk. Depending on whenever CM Punk comes back. But they need a champion on TV right now. I think it was predictable... When Moxley went in and putting the belt back on. Or honestly, I think they should just crown a new world champion. I didn't want to see another one of these interim, you know, champions again. Because now we got to have, like, two belts and stuff. Because we don't know when CM Punk is coming back. I think they should just took the belt off Punk. Relinquish it. Mox has the belt. Whenever Punk is healthy, Punk will be back. And Punk can get his rematch for that world title. And we can just go on from there. But they want to do the interim thing, so that's on them. But yeah, if Tata won, mm. Ugh. but yeah, if Tata Ashi won, you know, they could have just done the punk match at a later date. But I think the fans really did want to see Tata Ashi win. I think that would have been a bigger surprise if Tata Ashi won the world title. But they both were about to shake hands then after that. The next thing you know, Jericho and them come out. And then the rest of, you know, Santana, Ortiz, and, um, you know, um, Eddie Kingston, and everybody just comes out, and Ever Rise, and Garcia, and Jake Hager. Everybody just starts brawling in. You know, Claudio comes out after that. Starts uppercutting everybody out the ring. Regal comes out then. And then they have a big stare down. And that's the end of the show. Kind of ended flat, in my opinion. Call you in five minutes, okay? Five minutes. But, um, yeah. <coughs> I I think they should have just ended the show with Moxley and Tanahashi shaking hands. We've seen enough of the Blackpool Combat Club and the Jericho guys brawling each other. This felt like another ending to Rampage or Dynamite. We've seen this shit for like two weeks now, okay? I get it. You gotta book the blood and guts going into this Wednesday, okay? I understand that. But you should have just focused on this pay-per-view and have Moxley and Tanahashi shake hands and end the show from there. That's what they should have ended it on. Not, <clears throat> not doing the same thing you've done for the past two weeks now. We know Blood and Guts is this week. We know it already, okay? So I think the post-match stuff was not needed. It really wasn't. That, that, that didn't need to happen. And listen, I stayed a little bit after. I know Tony Khan came out. I know Negative One came out. Honestly, 
I thought CM Punk would have came out, at least just to say hello to the crowd. That's what I thought would have happened. They're giving it Chicago. You think he would have been here, but he wasn't. So he wasn't even here tonight. Uh. Yeah, he wasn't even here tonight and stuff. But um, I know they just ended the show with Moxley sending the crowd home happy, okay? But um, yeah, the post-match stuff was not needed. It really wasn't. But I did enjoy Tanahashi and Moxley. I will say this about this show. I think it was a lot of problems going into the show. Injuries hurt this show. From Punk getting hurt. To Danielson. <coughs> to guys that couldn't even show up tonight. <clears throat> from Ishii. To Hiromu Takahashi. To bigger names not even being on this show. <clears throat> from Naito. To Sonata. To other members of the Bullet Club. To shit, Kenta. G.O.D. A lot of names I would have expected on the show. But they were not here tonight. And I thought they would have been on here. Especially from the New Japan side. But I feel like a lot of this booking going into the show was not good. I think this was a very fun show. It was great to see Claudio debut tonight. I think the best match on this whole show was Claudio and Zack Sabre Jr. I think it was a good main event. I would have been happy if Tanahashi went over, but they need somebody on TV to be the world champion. Moxie would have not been my first choice, though, to be the world champion right now. Again, but who the fuck else you was going to put the belt on? Well, there's a lot of people they could have put the belt on, but a lot of people are hurt right now. Some people thought Omega was coming back tonight. That did not happen. I hope... Next time when they ever do another joint show, I hope more people are healthier because there was too many. <laughs> oh, damn, I don't feel good. <clears throat> there was too many booking changes, and um, too, it was just a lot of weird stuff going to this show. Just situations, controversies, companies beefing with each other, injuries out the woo all that, okay? Just a lot. Just a lot of things that did hurt this show in a way. It was still nice to see a lot of people that you don't usually get to see in America on this show that I did enjoy, which is pretty good. I think the weakest match was the women's title. Um, You know, given what I explained earlier. Sting. I enjoyed Sting. Um, too many title belts. They started out hot really good, though. A lot of these tag matches were good, though. Fatal 4-Away for the Atlantic belt. I thought it was the better Fatal 4-Away. Um, a lot of multi-man matches, though. FTR went on the tag belts was good. <coughs> Shit. Uh, who else? Uh, yeah, the world title matches. Yeah, that, that's all I got to say, though. I need to go drink some tea, all right? But comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at Hooded Night 890, all right? So, um, Forbidden Door, Chicago, United Center, really good show. I just think it was a lot of problems going into this show. And I think the ending felt very flat. And it felt like the last two episodes, like two weeks of Dynamite, okay? They tried to book too many shows at the same time. Should have focused more on this. Especially after Double or Nothing. Not try to book this in the Blood and Gut show at the same time. Like I explained earlier. So, Forbidden Door. I had fun watching the show. I enjoyed seeing a lot of people I did on there. Me and my brother had a, a great time. So, um, we enjoyed it, okay? And um, we'll see if I'm back in the United States again. I will try to post some footage of the show online if I can. I got a lot of editing to do. I ain't gonna drink some tea. So, yeah. I don't know why I'm fucking up with my voice tonight, but it's been fucking up for the past few days, alright? So I'm gonna see y'all then. I'm out of here. Peace out.